Hi, I'm Iris, and this is my jaw harp, also known as a Jew's harp. Today I'm going to show you some interesting physics behind how the sound waves of a jaw harp act in a resonant cavity. A jaw harp is played by plucking a narrow metal tongue between a stronger metal frame. The jaw harp is then placed against the teeth, and the plucked metal tongue vibrates between the teeth, creating sound waves inside the mouth. As mouth shape is changed, as shown here, the sounds we hear also change. To experimentally investigate how the change in the shape of the resonant cavity affects the sounds heard from the jaw harp, I used a small glass jar which I filled with water in increments of 20 milliliters. I then plucked the jaw harp over the jar with the water in it and used a lab view program to analyze the sounds produced during the plucking. The following images show the waveform above and the power spectrum below as the water level in the jar is increased. If you pay attention to the highest peak in the power spectrum, you'll notice that as the water level increases, the power spectrum also shifts to the right. Here I've plotted the position of the highest amplitude peak in the power spectrum as the water in the jar increases. Although I'm using a limited number of data points, it is clear that the position of the dominant frequency in the power spectrum does move to higher frequencies as water volume is increased. This quantitatively shows that changing the effective shape of the resonant cavity, such as the mouth, does change the pitches that we hear. As water level in the jar rises, the wavelengths of the sound that will be resonating in the cavity are shorter, which means that a higher frequency pitch will be heard. If you look at this waveform, you'll see a repetitive pattern of spiking and falling amplitudes repeating every few milliseconds. This pattern is called beating and occurs when two sound waves interfere with each other, alternating constructive and destructive interference. As seen here, two wavelengths of slightly different frequencies overlap with each other. Their amplitudes either build to create a louder sound or cancel each other out. This leads to a kind of wow, wow, wow sound as they interfere with each other. This is often seen when two instruments are slightly out of tune and is used to tune orchestral instruments especially. The orange arrows here highlight the beating that is occurring in the jaw harp waveform. What's interesting is that the jaw harp is creating two frequencies that interfere with each other all by itself, unlike two violins that individually might be out of tune. We also see a kind of double beating occurring in the waveform, with a large spike and then several smaller beats, followed by that pattern being repeated. I have highlighted this pattern with the larger red arrows. Beat frequency is calculated by taking the absolute value of the difference between the two interfering frequencies. To find the beat frequency of this waveform, I found the three highest peaks in amplitude of the power spectrum. Although there seem to be two spikes at equal amplitudes, I picked the spike at 1120 Hz, as it was seen to be higher than the similar peak in another trial at 100 milliliters of water. I then calculated the beat frequencies for the interference between the highest spike and the each smaller spike. Then find the period of each beat in milliseconds and match this to the plot of the waveform. This process is quite accurate for the small beating, however we are left with a 20% error for our larger beat pattern. Using the positions of the frequency spikes, I could then calculate the period and frequency of the beating waves as shown here. When the jar had 80 milliliters of water in it, this system of calculating the period worked perfectly. This shows us that the jaw harp is interfering with itself in creating these beats with many different frequencies that it's producing. It should also be noted that when the jar had 80 milliliters of water in it, as shown here, we got the highest amplitude spike in the power spectrum. This suggests that this is the cavity shape at which my jaw harp best resonates with this jar. Finally, to further investigate the double beating that I observed, I set up three function generators at three different frequencies to match the power spectrum shown in the 100 milliliter waveform. If you watch the waveform, you can see beating followed by double beating appear as the frequencies are added, which are shown in the power spectrum. The beat frequencies we find here are very close to the beat frequencies found when we were actually using a jar with the 100 milliliters of water in it. 
This shows us how sound can be manufactured to make these beats, although we still do not understand how the jaw harp creates the frequencies that interfere with each other in the way that it does. Although I do not understand how the jaw harp produces this beating, it is not surprising that it occurs based on the twanging sound we hear when listening to the jaw harp being played. The jaw harp presents some interesting concepts on how beat frequencies are produced in an instrument like this, and I would be interested in any comments or ideas on how this may occur.